Hey guys, it's Ex Machina again with another breakdown video. This is going to be the last track of the Sunshine Suicides album. It's called The Resonator. Uh, this is actually a super old track. Um, I made it before any of the other tracks on the current album. Um, I don't know, I just decided to use it. Uh, it was going to be in the vault forever, probably collect dust. Uh, but I decided to go ahead and toss it in the album because it just sounded like a perfect outro. Uh, if you guys haven't heard it yet, uh, definitely go check it out. But this is going to be a quick breakdown of all the elements utilized in the track. So right off the bat, we have the kick and bass. So this is pretty self-explanatory. I utilize the same kick and bass again like the other tracks. Super simple there. Next are the leads. Now there are quite a bit in this track. Uh, as you can see, we have the lo-fi roads, and then we have the sine wave synthesizer, which I use with Serum. Then I have the guitar sounds here, and then I have actual strings in here as well, which give it a nice flare, and then we have the piano. So I'll go ahead and solo all of this, and then we'll just play it from one section so you can hear all of it. So as you can hear, it's not on the beat. Uh, everything that I have is non-quantized. Even on the side, you can see that we adjust some of the milliseconds for the snare and the hats, just to give it a little laggy feel. Uh, the, the one thing about the whole dark lo-fi glitch is that you want to try to shy away from making everything on the beat, because then you can't really play with the glitches. Um, the whole reason why the sound of this style sounds so flowy but on B is because we really just play uh, with all the sounds without quantize and then you just kind of feel out where the drums and the you know the drums sit the elements sit things like that but then again you also have like my signature sound here which takes up most of the sounds so if we just solo here you can see Very simple, but that's what's filling up the gaps, which is uh, very big, in this track at least. Now, besides the actual leads and the kick and bass, we have the basics, we got the snare. So again, with the snare, super massive is very important. Um, also, I try to get rid of as much of the high end of the snare as I can, so I use this specific filter on every single snare that I have, uh, or on every single track that I use. So this section right here, so just keep in mind that that, again, that sound is what we are aiming for every time. So as you can see with the Supermassive here, we actually play with the delay on this. But we have the mix, so the mix will um, also come in at a certain hit. And then the delay warp, which will give it that interesting sound here. If we just pull up all of them next to each other here, and then we do the mix, and then we do the other one, you can just kind of see what all is happening here. So that gives your drums quite a bit of character there. And then I'll do the same thing with the hats, honestly. Uh, it just really depends on where I want them in the hats. Uh, but not all the time do I do it. But on this one, as you can see, I went ham on the mix and I kept the settings the same. You know, it just gives it that oomph. 
Okay, and then from there we have the vocals, obviously. So this is uh, the big part of the track here. Now I get all my vocal samples from Splice. I uh, really don't have time to scour the internet, so I just try to find what sounds decent, and then I'll chop it up or you know destroy it. And then we add the effects like analog collapse. We'll EQ it, some reverb. And then we'll sidechain it, obviously, with the drums. So when we do the drums, it's kick and snare is what we sidechain to. This will just make it cleaner. And then we have some bird sound effects, it seems. Um, I didn't even realize, but I guess we do. Yeah. So it's, you know, just basic somatics pack with, like, like, just sounds. I mean, really, you can go out and record your own sounds, or which is what I've been doing recently, but... Uh, you can get sounds, but you just want to essentially give your track more texture. Um, now, the next big part is, I think we just mentioned earlier, is the signature X Machina sounds here. So, I actually have multiple layers. So, like, I run effects, like, I'll run the tree tone with some effects, and it'll record it on one channel, and then I'll run that through some effects, get it on another channel. And then I do that a few times until you get these crazy, weird, warpy sounds. And then we just layer the track with that. And then obviously you can see that I chop out all the excess just so we can get the clean hits on the kick and snare on occasion. And then the final element, obviously you got the vinyl. Now this one, I actually don't make it glitchy. It sounds pretty straightforward, but the way that I typically, again, do the glitches is I will find, you know, a specific one, and then I will, like, warp by making a long, and then I'll actually reverse the sound. And you can already hear that it sounds glitchy. And this is on the beat warp again. But we'll go back. But yeah, that is it for the Sunshine Suicides album. That will be all of the tracks break down. So I hope you guys enjoyed and learned a few things. There's definitely going to be a lot more breakdown videos on the older tracks that I've created, but we're going to go in depth on production and some of the techniques that I utilize to create the dark lo-fi glitch sound. So see you on the next one.